Hello and welcome to a virtual session. Um, our session topic today is stress management. I'm Laura Laporte from Fulton Montgomery Community College and thank you so much for joining us today. We've got two fantastic speakers today. Let me introduce you to our guest speakers. Um, Bethany Condit, she is from St. Mary's Healthcare, also Montgomery County Health uh, Clinic, and that's in association with Fulton Montgomery Community College. She's a behavioral health therapist, and also Dorothea Van Valkenburg, also St. Mary's Healthcare Montgomery County Mental Health Clinic in association with FMCC, and a behavioral health counselor. Welcome, Bethany. Welcome, Dorothea. How are you today? Thank you so much for having us. Doing very well, thank you. Well, this is, I think, very timely. I think, um, you know, we're living in some unprecedented times. And, you know, I, I'm sure everyone can attest to the fact that the stress level um, has risen, um, new things, new challenges, uh, we have to adapt. All those things are, are going on. So I think this particular workshop is very timely not only for our students, but anyone else who might be uh, tuning in today as well. So, so thank you again for, for helping us out. So before we get started, I just wanna to mention to those who are viewing, um, you, your questions are welcome and you can just type those uh, into the chat um, and we will, we will field those questions uh, as they come through. So with that, I'm just gonna open up this discussion with a, just a basic question about, you know, what is stress management? Okay, so let me ask everybody who's watching here today. Have you ever felt stress as a student? I'm sure you're all saying yes. <laughs> There's a joke and it goes, my doctor asked me if I ever had a stress test. Yes, I replied, it's called life. But seriously, life is full of stressors, right? And we need to be ready to manage this. So we're gonna talk today about stress and helpful interventions. Um, but first we have to understand, you know, what is stress? So stress is a normal reaction of brain and body to any change that requires an adjustment. And there's different types of stress that we experience. We experience routine stress that's related to work, pressures, um, family, friends, daily responsibilities. On top of that, we have stress that can be related to a significant change, such as a job loss, when people are worried, how will I pay my bills? How, what does this mean for my career? Where will I work next? You know, another example is it when someone experienced a divorce. You know, how do I start over in this new, in a new relationship? How do I go from a two person household to one? Or even serious illness, when will I feel better? Is there some type of cure? Will I need medication? And then as we go up further, um, we see traumatic stress. And this, is, this results from a major accident, wartime, assault, or even natural disaster. And the word trauma indicates that the person experiencing the stress was in danger of serious harm or even death. So we all experience stress and everyone experiences this on different levels. Our normal stressors right now are amplified by the pandemic as we are facing many changes at once, wearing masks everywhere, having to go one way down the supermarket aisle and making sure we're getting it right, being cut off from our typical outlets and missing out on time with family and friends. So stress management is learning and practicing ways to manage one's stress levels during all of these changes. I do want to point out that some stress can be helpful. Um, for example, in a dangerous situation, stress signals the body to prepare to face a threat or to flee to safety, right? Our adrenaline gets going, we feel stronger, we get faster, we, we, re we react quicker. Um, and we may notice this by our pulse quickening, feel a surge of energy and notice changes in our breathing. So this response is helpful in response to an actual danger. At the same time, it can also be helpful in non-life-threatening situations. So stress can motivate people to prepare. An example of this would be for a job interview. Stress might make us do research on the company we wanna work for. It might help us practice our interviewing skills. 
you know, we might do a mock interview to ensure that we're a worthy candidate instead of just winging it. Also, we can see this in taking a test. Stress helps you to study the material to really prepare yourself for the test so that you get good grades and get to the career that you're dreaming of. Without stress, we wouldn't care so much. So now Dorothea will talk about why managing stress is important. So stress impedes our ability to perform. When we are faced with significant stress, it impacts that ability to study for the test and retain the information. It, it's overly impacts our lives. So when we are experiencing stress within any aspect, it has an impact on our personal lives, but also with our work and school life balance. If it goes unmanaged, you can end up getting sick from your stress, as well as it potentially leading to burnout. Um, it also interferes, interferes with our relationships with our loved ones, our friends, our families, and overall just a feeling of feeling happy or contentment within our lives if our stress level is really high. If it doesn't become, uh, if our stress is not managed, it can lead to chronic stress. And what chronic stress is, it's a, that challenging feeling that your body doesn't know when to not be in that high state. state. Um, eventually our body, when we come out of a stressful situation, our body function returns to normal. But when we're in a chronic state, our body continues to be at that hyper stress level with our adrenaline going. And um, our life-saving uh, systems are impacted by that if we are in a set state of constant stress. It impacts our immune system, our digestive, track, our cardiovascular, our sleep, and our reproductive systems. Stress management is defined by the types of interventions that we use to carry out to fight stress. We encourage people to intentionally decide how they manage stress rather than the stress managing you. Well, that's really interesting. And, and uh, you know, understanding the different levels and severity, um, you know, I, I just really never realized that. And, and is it, is it possible that over the course of your life, you'll maybe experience all of those? Or is it, or is, is, is it chronic stress really something that very few people um, experience in their life on a day-to-day -day basis? Well, I think people have, unfortunately, the opportunity to experience the different levels. You know, we, 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 hope for people to not have to have experienced traumatic stress for, for certain, um, but being that the majority of people right now are going through this pandemic, right? In some ways, for some people, this is traumatic stress. Mm -hmm. um, also with, with the chronic stress, it's chronic until you do something about it. So once you're able to stop and interrupt that cycle, um, then you can, you can turn it around. So what are the signs of stress? Can you um, help us out with that? Because um, there may be some things that we do, we don't even realize that, that it, it, that's being caused by stress. Yes. So first, I, I want to take a minute just to talk about a recent study that was completed by the American Psychological Association, in which they interviewed just over 3,000 adults, asking them to rate their stress level on a scale of 1 to 10. So during the study, people indicated that prior to COVID, the average stress level was 5.4. During the pandemic, it rose to 5.9. So we saw this rise. Now, I, I do wanna also highlight the average for parents of children under the age of 18 was significantly higher at 6.7. So this makes a lot of sense, right? All these changes, we have adults and children attending virtual classrooms, trying to teach and learn at the same time while working maybe and balancing multiple responsibilities. So stress is currently impacting a lot of people in a lot of ways. So with that, stress itself manifests in lots of ways. We see it physically in the body in the form of headaches, fatigue, maybe changes in breathing. We see it in our mind through form of worrying nightmares, having negative thinking, difficulty making decisions, and it affects us emotionally, causing a decrease in confidence, feeling irritable, and maybe even sometimes making us feel depressed. 
So stress can impact our behaviors as we may eat less, we might eat for comfort, we might not be able to fall asleep, um, and, and even engaging in some unhealthy behaviors such as isolating, drinking alcohol, using other substances or smoking. So we wanna look out for those things. And being that we're living through a pandemic, we want, you know, the CDC is even acknowledging that an infectious outbreak can cause these changes in behavior. They can, it can cause fear and worry about your own health and people that are important to you. Also fear of losing financial uh, help and, and jobs. And then also that this can worsen chronic and mental health conditions that are already there. So knowing all of that about stress with all of these changes, we wanna discuss how to adjust, right? Because stress is changes that need an adjustment. So how we adjust in a positive way. Right. So if we get to step back for just a second, and um, I'm sure the audience is really interested in learning a little bit about the two of you as to your career path, what your roles are, and specifically, I know there's a lot of FMCC students uh, watching this as well. What services um, you provide to FM? So uh, if each one maybe just take a little bit of a turn and just uh, talk a little bit about that, I think that's very helpful. Um, so, so I'm Bethany Condit and my background is in social work. I am a licensed master of social work. Um, I have a lot of experience working with people who have serious medical conditions um, in, in the realm of palliative care. So really helping people emotionally, physically, spiritually um, deal with life and, and, and really having that person-centered approach. Most recently, you know, prior to St. Mary's, I was working with Ellis Medicine providing um, outpatient mental health therapy. So really helping people to address their anxiety, address their depression, and, and, and bring more quality into their life. And I'll let Dorothea talk about um, our connection. So I'm an LMHC, and what that is is a licensed mental health counselor. Um, and I've been working in the mental health field for a good chunk of time. I started working for the Mental Health Association of Fulton and Montgomery County, um, working in a community residence. And what typically my day-to-day -day job with that position was kind of just helping people learn ways to manage their stress and take care of themselves in their day-to-day -day lives. From there, I've connected with um, St. Mary's and I've been working with them for a, a, again, a good chunk of time. And I worked at PROS and with the Health Homes program for a while. And both of these programs, although they're different, the main goal is to increase our ability to advocate for change and learn more about what it is to have a mental, mental health condition or a me medical condition. And from there, um, it's almost been three years I've been with our clinic and Bethany and I see anyone over the age of 18 we are able to connect with a variety of people with different concerns, um, really anything that people have going on that is causing them stress or any sort of discomfort they can come in and work with us on. Um, here at FM, we see any student that we is interested, which is wonderful. It's um, typically our wait time for coming to see us here at FM is significantly shorter than all um, T the typical wait time for any sort of clinic in the area or the community. And we provide one-on-one -on -one support. It's the same as if you were coming with us in the clinic, your privacy is our priority. We wanna make sure everything we talk about is confidential. Um, with us being connected with FM, I know sometimes the question is if that will be in any way, shape or form connected to your educational record. And it's not, since we're part of St. Mary's, it's a completely different health, uh, health system than we document in. So whatever we talk about, it literally will be as confidential as we would, as if you were coming to see us in the clinic, which I think is a valuable service that FM offers. The other perk of working with FM is that St. Mary's and FM have a contract that allows any copay that you'd be responsible for, for coming in for counseling to be covered by FM. So we build your insurance and then after that, Usually a copay is like thirty to forty dollars. FM picks that up so that you will not have any financial s stressors coming from being connected with us while you're a student at FM, which is wonderful. 
Yeah, that's that's really fantastic. And um, right now, are you doing phone appointments with students? Or are you seeing them face to face? Or can you give me a little sense as to how that's working out in this unique situation? That right we're now, we're doing all um, telehealth appointments. Primarily, our students are preferring by phone, but we do have video session capability if they're interested in it. But um, the nice thing about that, it makes it a lot easier to fit into the schedule of a student right now. Um, if you have clinical, if you have rotations, it's much easier to block off that time versus planning and driving, waiting, making sure you're out on time, which is, a, I think, of allowing more students be able to consistently show up for their appointments and stay connected with us. Yeah. Um, from your experience, um, what would you say is one of the top stress uh, agents, if you will, for students? What, what are some of the things that um, you're, you're hearing from students and what's your advice? How, how, do, you, how do you help them uh, manage that stress and maybe some suggestions for, for helping them in, in, in a particular um, stressful situation? I think in a normal semester, and Bethany, you can tell me if you're seeing something else, it typically is balancing all the responsibilities of college. Yes, there's other things that come up that impact our stress, concerns with loved ones, financial stressors, but I think it's just balancing the obligations of being in school and being successful academically while still taking care of everything that else happens outside the home. Um, if you had anxiety before starting college, that definitely is gonna play a role. And Bethany and I are, have a lot of different tips to help manage stress, but um, I know that balancing all the responsibilities, let alone if you're a parent, and I think with the pandemic, it's added an additional level of stress because school seems to be sometimes the outlet for our, our adult students coming in that they they have that little bit of time as they drive to campus to just be alone, to breathe and relax. So being at home 24 seven with their kids, although they love them is a significant stress to be with someone 24 seven. Right, that definitely, that definitely it can be very wearing. And we're hearing about that, that that's, uh, could be some of the reasons why we're seeing maybe some upticks in COVID cases because people are fatigued. They're, mm -hmm tired of being cooped up and, and, and so forth. And, um, you know, that's a, that's a really hard discipline to maintain that. But, um, so far, you know, our students have been doing a really great job. Um, and, uh, you know, it's been working out really, really well. So what are some ways to prevent or, or relieve stress? Do you guys have any suggestions, anything that, um, that maybe would be helpful for anyone to, <laughs> to um, you know, relieve some stress. Luckily, there's a million and one ways to help reduce your stress. So Bethany and I are gonna talk about a whole bunch of different ones. Um, the one that I think that we have somewhat a lot of control over is sleep. The more sleep you get, the more rested you're going to feel. Um, when we're sleeping, your body is regulating your hormones and kind of getting it back to a neutral state. Um, replenishing the cells. So if we're not sleeping enough, it's going to impact our ability to function and do all the stuff that we need to do in our crazy schedules. Um, they recommend seven to eight hours of sleep. I know as college students, sleep is usually the first thing to go when we have a busy day. So um, seven to eight might sound like a shock. Um, some tips that they we found to kind of help was um, make sure the bedroom is dark, whether you're wearing an eye mask or curtains in your room. Um, make sure the bedroom is a comfortable temperature. If it's too hot or too cold, you might not be able to relax and fall asleep. Um, turning off electronics, which I know with COVID can be tricky since we're constantly connected to one another. Um, avoiding food, caffeine, and alcohol for at least four hours before you go to bed will help kind of you unwind to get closer to falling asleep. And then doing physical activity throughout the day kind of will help allow your body to kind of get that, those jitters out to rest, to fall asleep. Um, some other tips are taking a hot shower before bed, um, listening to music, reading, or meditation before you fall asleep. 
Yes, so another kind of basic uh, building block for stress is our nutrition, right? It's highly important because when we're feeling stressed, our tendency might be to reach for quick, convenient foods, and they're not always the most nutrient dense. Um, so I want to kind of encourage you to think of your body as a natural machine, right? It requires nutritious fuel to function at optimum capacity. So with that, we need vitamins, minerals, macronutrients, right? Proteins, carbohydrates, and healthy fat. Um, and we just don't always think about that. So some foods that can help to really defeat stress by creating more energy are different fruits and vegetables, such as bananas, apples, avocados, leafy greens, um, fish, eggs, various nuts and seeds, brown rice, quinoa, sweet potatoes, dark chocolate, which is one of my favorite, um, oatmeal, yogurt, edamame, lentils, and various beans. And, and so keeping in mind with nutrition, the importance of staying hydrated, right? Because our body can't function well without, without really being hydrated. And so the recommendation is eight glasses of eight ounces of water per day. And when we stay hydrated, our body will function at its highest level. Um, and so an easy way to do that is kind of carry a water bottle around with you, right? And just refill it when it gets empty. So now knowing that sleep is important and fueling our body is important, how we use our body is important, right? So physical activity, right? Or any form of movement is essential to manage stress, right? Physical movement is not only good for our muscle fibers, our joints, our cardiovascular system, but also mentally, it helps our ability to focus, to regulate mood and, to, and emotions. Um, and I'm sure if you have worked out before, you felt that rush of endorphins after, you know, it's a natural way to lift our mood, help improve self-confidence and, and also our ability to make decisions. So we encourage people to start or try to aim for three times a week for maybe roughly 30 minutes. Um, and that's adjustable for your life depending on your needs and your, your, and your time that's available. Some examples of this could be going for a walk, right? Playing with your kids, doing some yard work, our favorite, um, mm -hmm. or, or even some, or even going to the gym because some of the gyms are open now as long as you're safe about it. I also want to include YouTube, right? Because YouTube has all these videos on so many different types of exercises or movement, um, including yoga. There's mommy and me videos and different and different way to use weights. So because there are so many ways to move, it's really important that we're moving our bodies. So we encourage you put on some music and just dance and I assure you will feel better. That's, that's really cool. Um, so basically um, you, sleeping, what you eat and your activity, those are like the building blocks of helping you stay healthy as well as maybe some stress reduction. So that, I love that idea about putting on some music and just dancing. That's a, that's an easy one. Turn on the radio, right? And, and uh, if you got kids at home, um, that's, that's a lot of fun. They would, they'll join right in on that uh, as well. Um, so what are some of the other things that you're finding that people are getting kind of hung up on as far as stress uh, that, that you've been able to help people with? What, what are some of the common uh, questions that you guys get um, about um, stress and maybe managing college, et cetera? What, what, what's been your experience with students? So one of the things I've been seeing across the board, not just at FM, but every person my loved ones, you name it, is the social connection to another person. Missing out on being able to have an in-person study group, sitting classes with another person and kind of just that human interaction because nowadays you go to the grocery store, you're trying to get out there of there as fast as you can. You're not supposed to travel to any major groups. So we're missing out on that interaction with another person and it's creating a lot of isolation and depression just because you're stuck at home if you're practicing the social di distancing correctly. And we are human beings that need connections with another people. And I think um, just encouraging that to be creative with how to connect. Um, 
I think if you're an FM student, you probably have some sort of technological um, background for connecting with people through virtual platforms. So I think that is the perk of having um, even just classes virtually is that you're able to connect with people and hopefully you're able to participate in those type of situations. So just finding ways to connect, I think is a great way to both relieve stress, but also to kind of prevent that isolation that people are feeling. Yeah, I think that's that's great advice. I, I know that a lot of people utilize Zoom uh, mm -hmm. as a way to maybe connect with their family and friends or FaceTime and um, just having that, you know, maybe a brief few moments and so forth with people maybe you haven't seen for a while mm -hmm. um, can can really make a, a big difference. So that that's that's really yeah, that's really good advice. So I know, um, Bethany, you um, wanted to make some recommendations as to maybe some apps or some websites and so forth, um, kind of as we're, we're getting uh, to the end of our discussion today. Did you want to talk a little bit about any other self-help methods or um, resources that um, maybe you, you, you would make as a recommendation to our students? So I have a whole list of them. Um, I'm gonna jump in for Bethany. Okay. So, um, so Bethany and I came up with a list of things that take less than 10 minutes to help manage stress. Cause I know um, college students, parents, even though we're stuck at home, it seems like we don't have a lot of time for ourselves mm -hmm. in the home. So I'm gonna just read off the list and I hope whoever's watching can identify with the couple ones that come from the list, but also what we've been talking about so far. Um, so less than 10 minute activities is listening to your favorite music, stretching or doing yoga poses, looking at a photo that makes you smile, read for pleasure, count to 10 slowly and repeat it, dance. I think dance is a popular one that keeps coming up that I hope everybody does. Mm -hmm. uh, journaling, just getting the thoughts that you have in your head on paper so they're not necessarily stuck in your brain. Um, doodle, draw or color. Chewing on a piece of gum, watching a funny YouTube video, punching a pillow, looking up inspirational quotes. Um, I'm a big Pinterest person, and I think if you just type in inspiration for whatever you're going through, stuff will come up. Um, spend time with animals or pets. Do something nice for someone else. Take a shower. Use essential oil, oils, um, and then take slow, deep breaths. And on our last, the slide that's gonna go up once we're done is a whole bunch of apps you can use if you're stressed or trying to come up with things. There's YouTube channels. Um, there's some hotline numbers if you would like to get connected. Um, so a lot of supports are out there. And if any of the ones that we've talked about today don't fit, if you'd search tips for stress management or things to do, I promise you the web, the internet is full of that type of stuff. Oh, that's really good. That that's fantastic. And you know, um, I I'm a pet lover. You know, and I can really attest to that does bring down the stress. Just <laughs> your your pets. You know, when you get home, they're so happy to see you. And uh, you know that that is a a nice way to uh, relieve some. So those are really great um, suggestions, Dorothea. Thank you for that. And 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 actually, um, she was kind enough to share an entire list of those suggestions as well as um, apps uh, and websites. So we're gonna post that at the end of this session and leave that up so that if people want to jot that down, um, they certainly uh, can get that information. So um, any other last suggestions or tips before we end our discussion that you'd like to add, Bethany or Dorothea? Yeah, so I think, you know, especially for students, um, having a plan is so important because things can start out very overwhelming. How am I going to get through this semester? How am I going to get assignments done for three classes, right? And, and some people take even more than that. So really trying to find out and, and drill in to yourself, when do I have the most energy, right? What time of day is the best time for me to tackle the big projects? And then try to lay that out ahead of time. Um, because once you break something down into small manageable steps, it's a lot less overwhelming and stressful um, to get started and get it done. So it's not stressing you out anymore. So I think that that's really important. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's really great advice. That is really great advice for, for anyone who's trying to 
get through any type of uh, project. So that's fantastic. Anything else you'd like to add before we, uh, we wrap up our session today? So I don't know if Bethany wants to talk about the song. Okay, she does. Okay, go okay. ahead. I'll let Bethany just say it over. <laughs> um, but it's, so I really want people to know that during these stressful times, it's really important to practice self-compassion. So this means that you're patient with yourself. You acknowledge that you're human and you're not perfect, right? You give yourself praise where you deserve it. Acknowledge the effort that you're putting in and, and be your own cheerleader. Um, you know, what would you, what are the words that you would say to a friend who's having a tough time? Um, you know, if they were feeling discouraged, fearful, I encourage you use those same words and treat yourself in that with that same respect and in that same way. Um, also, it's important not to have these unrealistic expectations for yourself, right? Because that can just put more stress uh, on us. Um, so, you know, I'd like to kind of wrap up my piece by saying you, you, you are capable, you are amazing, you are important, and thank you for connecting with us today. That's really great advice. And, and I just want to say thank you, Dorothea. Thank you, Bethany, for your time and such valuable information. Um, it, was, it was really fantastic. And this, this information will be shared with people as, as this is being recorded. So I, I really want to thank you both uh, for taking the time um, to uh, share those that information with us. So, so thank you so much. And I want to thank everyone out there. Um, if you're interested in seeing this video, it will be posted at fmcc.edu. Uh, I'm Laura Laporte from Fulton Montgomery Community College, and thank you for joining us today. Have a great night. Thank you. Thank you.